everyone, I'm Grace, um, the co-founder of Zoom Vet, and today we'll be bringing to you a very special Christmas dinner courtesy of our friends at Kohi Pets. So um, these are all the lovely things that they have sponsored very kindly for our very special meal today. So do stay tuned. So now we know that you know it's nice to share our Christmas food with our furry pets. But the problem is not everything is necessarily safe for them. So today we'll be adapting some um, food and um, these recipes will be both cat and dog friendly. Okay, so on the menu that we have today, we'll be preparing a Christmas pumpkin soup um, topped with special chicken puree and enriched with chicken piti collagen. We'll also be doing a special um, salmon carbonara where we'll replace bacon with salmon bacon, so we'll teach you that, as well as a dessert of floating island. And for our holiday special, we'll be putting together a red velvet log cake for you and your pets. So um, we'll be starting off with the pumpkin soup first. If you want to know what ingredients exactly we'll be using, just check out the description below uh, and all the ingredients will be listed over there. So just to take note, I mean you're always welcome to do your own substitutions. Um, if you think that the recipe is great and you want to make it for your own consumption, feel free. Maybe just add a little bit more salt, otherwise the food might be a little bit plain. Um, yeah, and if your pet happens to be allergic to any of the particular proteins that we have listed here, feel free to swap it out. I think one special thing to take note of is that we will be using some stock inside this um, recipe. So what's really good um, is that you should purchase or make your own stock. The idea is that not all stocks are pet safe because they can be very very high in sodium. So if you want to find a fuss-free, pet-friendly stock, do head over to Kohi Pets because this is one of the products that they have sponsored us. We've included pumpkin um, because it is Christmassy, but also um, it's a really nice um, vegetable that's super high in fiber. Um, so if your pet has issues with constipation um, and you want to include more fiber in their diet naturally, then actually including steamed pumpkin or pumpkin puree in their diet is actually a really good idea. Over here we've included some chicken feet to make the stock. Uh, the idea is that the chicken feet when boiled will form a really nice gelatin so that will form our nice chicken puree. Um, if you don't want to use chicken and you want to use other animals, feel free. Um, I guess for pork you could try the skin but then cut out the fat because it can be a little bit unhealthy. Um, and we have opted to use some chicken thighs over here. Um, for additional flavouring, I just have some offcuts of squid over here. You can use offcuts of, I don't know, prawn. Um, and I also have some pet friendly um, salted fish or ikan bilis. Um, don't use regular ikan bilis because that's also really high in salt. You can get um, salted, unsalted pet friendly ikan bilis at the pet shop. So um, I'll just start by cutting up the pumpkin into large chunks. I've already washed it. Um, and otherwise, everything just sort of goes into the pressure cooker. After um, pressure cooking all the ingredients, that will be when we fish it out and we'll be blending the chicken meat um, to form our chicken um, puree as well as blending the pumpkin separately with the stock to form our lovely pumpkin soup. Okay, so the next dish we'll be making is the special salmon carbonara but with um, salmon skin bacon. So. Um, I guess as you all know pancetta or bacon would form a very important part of our carbonara dishes um, but it's not necessarily the best for our pets because of how high in sodium it is. So we'll be making a lovely crispy substitute um, but with salmon skin instead and um, I'll show you how. So we'll be starting with a lovely piece of salmon. Um, of course choose a piece of salmon with the skin on otherwise you won't be able to make salmon skin bacon. Um, so we'll be starting by removing the skin from the salmon. So you can put it skin down and then with a sharp knife just go as close as you can to the skin. To de-skin uh, the entire piece of salmon. Um, so it's fine if your, your piece isn't whole and it's a bit ugly. I'm pretty sure that your pets just care that the food's delicious and not that it looks a little bit like a mangled mess. So be kind to yourself, it's the holidays anyways. Um, and I think this whole thing was just meant to be a fun exercise anyhow. So um, as you can see, mine is starting to look a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. But that's cool. Um, that's how we roll. <laughs> so okay, so over here we have the salmon skin, a bit, a bit, a bit mangled, but that's cool. Um, I'm going to continue to remove some more of the, the meat because that's not really going to crisp up that well. And then we'll be using a trusty oven to help us get the salmon skin all nice and crisp up. 
So if you look over here, I have crabs. Don't bite that. Okay. No. Okay. So um, we have a piece of baking paper here to prevent the salmon skin from no nope, sticking. Um, puppet face. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter because we'll be sort of squishing it anyhow. So we're putting it on the baking paper. Um, I'll be adding a little bit of oil just to help it crisp up a little bit more. So be very, very um, stingy with your oil because you don't want to go too crazy. Um, sometimes when your foods are too oily, your pets can get pancreatitis. So this is when after you've given them, I don't know, a bit of suey or something very delicious, then they start vomiting or having diarrhea. So something to watch out for. What I find really handy if you want to be quite light on the oil is using cooking sprays. So you can get olive oil cooking sprays and this ensures that you get like a light layer but nothing too much. Uh, if you don't have all this fancy that's fine. Oh, fancy stuff, that's fine. <laughs> um, you can just put olive oil in a little bowl, have a brush and just sort of apply it um, sparingly. That works as well. Um, yeah, so what I do is that I fold over baking paper and I bake it with a weight and that just sort of helps to keep the salmon um, super nice and flat so that later on it looks almost like a brittle and we can break it up into salmon, bacon, skin shards, so yeah. Alright, so I've just preheated the oven. Um, it will be going in at about 250 degrees, so really really hot. And then we'll leave it there and that's it. Okay. So now we'll be preparing the protein part of the salmon. Um, feel free to poach the salmon, so that's like, you can just take a bit of boiling water, simmering water, pop the salmon in whole, um, wait for it to be cooked and then take it out as well. Um, you can pan fry it as well, uh, so that gets it a nice crisp um, exterior, but also um, if you're pan frying it, then just sort of watch out on how much oil that you'll be, um, you'll be using for your pets. Alright, so our salmon is all nice and sealed, so we'll be popping this into a water bath, uh, and this would be cooking at 45 degrees. So earlier on, we've actually already sous vide our squid, which we've just cut up into little strips um, to mimic noodles. So um, the reason why this carbonara dish is safe for cats and dogs is because everything that we've included inside is all carbohydrate free. So um, one fun fact about cats is that they're obligate carnivores and they should not be eating any carbs. So sharing your pasta with your pet is not really that great an idea. So um, in subs as, as a substitute, we've shredded up um, bits of squid and sous vide it at 60 degrees for about 3 hours. So the idea is that when you um, sous vide the squid, it actually turns really nice and soft, kind of like noodles. Um, if you don't have a sous vide to do this, you could boil it, but it might end up being a little bit stringy. But I don't think your pets are going to care. So. Okay, so now while we're waiting for all our other things to cook, uh, we'll get started on our special red velvet log cake. So to do that, we're actually making use of the puppy cake cake mix. Um, it's meant to make red velvet cake or red velvet cupcakes, but we're just going to adapt it and change the shape of our cake so that you get a log cake. Um, the cake mix itself seems fairly simple. You only need three simple ingredients, which we have laid out here. So your cake mix, um, and in addition to that, uh, one egg, um, three quarters of a cup of water, and one quarter cup of oil. Pop it into a bowl and mix with a wooden spoon, and I think that's it. So a little bit thinner than what you would expect from a regular cake batter recipe, but no worries. Make sure that your baking paper overhangs so that you don't end up with a mess inside your oven. And pour it this in. Okay, so just pop it into the oven uh, that we have preheated at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, so about 180 degrees. And we're going to leave it in there to bake for about 20 to 24 minutes um, until our toothpick inserted comes out clean. So I think because this cake is much, much thinner than any of the other cake shapes that they're recommending, I'm just going to check on it maybe in about 15 minutes just to make sure that it's not overdone. Um, and yeah, let's get on with the rest of our meal. The icing pretty much is the same as whatever the red velvet cake mix uh, instructions were. We need to add 2 tablespoons of water into the icing. We're going to be rolling up into a beautiful log cake. Okay, so now we'll get started on our cat and dog friendly dessert. We'll be infusing the milk with some of this lovely freeze dried oops, lamb cookie. I've already gotten some of the cookies pulverized over here for my milk infusion. 
but just so that you guys can check out what the product is all about, you can tell Lego really likes it. Um, it comes out in little pucks like that. So to infuse milk, um, fairly simple, just pop the, the lamb into a little pot. Um, we'll be using this um, pet milk that's lactose free um, in this infusion. So one important thing um, to note is that if you want to, you know, include any dairy products in your pet's foods, um, ensuring that it's lactose free is quite important. Most cat and dogs are um, lactose intolerant to a certain extent. Just giving it all a quick whisk before just sort of gently heating up on the stove and then leaving the whole mixture to cool so that it is nice and milky and lamby all at once. Part two of the floating islands is that making the islands that float. So um, to do that, we'll be making a meringue. So um, you can get three eggs. Um, the important thing is to make sure your bowl is nice and clean and doesn't have any oil in it. If not, your meringues might have some problems with rising. I kind of like using my hands to do the separation because I don't need to worry as much about bursting the yolk. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, keep the yolks because those will be coming in handy later on when we are making the carbonara for our pets. So keep them aside. I'll use a little bit of lemon juice to act as a stabilizer. I don't. So. Alright, so now we will whisk them to stiff peaks. So um, when you hear them say stiff peaks, what they mean is that if you lift your beaters, um, your peaks sort of stay stiff. And then now all you have to do is assemble. So for the dessert, you can pick any pretty glass that you have. Just sort of pick this because that's what I have. Using a little spoon to scoop out some of my meringue to form my happy little island. Oh, it's a giant island. The island's small. Finish off all fancy. So um, to make the carbonara, typically you would like get cooked pasta and toss it in egg yolks. But I guess in this difficult, the difficulty in this case is that we don't really have hot pasta, we have like the sous vide squid. So what I've done instead is that I've created like a bambari. So you just pop in boiling water in a bottom pan. Um, and then you have egg yolks in a pan on top. You don't have to use this thing that I have, you just use regular metal heat proof bowl. And the idea is that you sort of whisk it. Um, so as the egg heats up, it will start to cook uh, and it will turn a nice pale yellow. Okay, so now we'll be assembling our carbonara. We will be popping our sous vide squid noodles into the sauce. Over here we have our bacon salmon skin really nice and crispy. So what we'll be doing is that we'll be getting this um, Mary's Magical Dinner Dust. Coat the outside of our salmon. And there you have it. Our special um, carb-free salmon squid carbonara. <laughs> and now we're just going to put together the soup. So if you're wondering how what, what, whatever we put in the pot before became this soup. Basically, um, this is just the chicken thigh that I have pureed with some of the concentrated stock. So it's really high in collagen because of all the chicken feet, which is why when you chill it, uh, it turns into this like mousse-like texture. And for the pumpkin soup, what I've done is that I have taken the pumpkin, um, the squid bits, the fish bits, anything edible except for the chicken feet, um, popped it into a blender and pulverized it. So if you find that you prefer your chicken, uh, your, your, not chicken, your pumpkin soup a little bit runnier, you can add a little bit more water. Um, I've just popped in some of the leftover juice from the salmon, so nothing goes to waste because I am trying this. <laughs> so just to plate it now, pop it into a little And to top it off, we have some of these lovely freeze-dried um, meal mixers to kickstart your kibble. So this is also another lovely product that was sponsored by our friends at Koki Pets. We thought that these cool little nuggets look really like croutons. So that's what we're going to top off our lovely soup with and just scattering a couple of them there. So um, Ringo's been a knocker, so I think he can't quite wait. So we're just going to let him... <laughs> 
gonna let him try. Try the soup. Alright, so now for our Christmas special, the love cake. <laughs> so for those of you at home who are a little bit more successful than me and are able to get a whole sheet, congratulations. So usually I would um, spread the icing on the inside of the cold love cake, but sometimes um, things don't turn out as you expected and my love cake is very deconstructed. How to make a lovely Christmas trifle instead. Your trifle container. I've chosen a small little glass cup. Um, the main thing is to make sure that your layers show up really nicely against the sides of the, the cup. I've just popped the icing into like a little Ziploc bag uh, just so that it's a little bit easier to handle. Oops, cut off a corner. So then we'll just pipe it on. Um, I'll just take care to do it along the edges. And this is just so that we can see now that if a layer of red and a layer of white, a layer of red, we'll now go in with a nice layer of brown. Okay, and there we have it. Our save from disaster <laughs> Christmas trifle. Okay, so that's a wrap. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Uh, so just to recap, we made three lovely dishes today. A pumpkin soup with chicken puree. Um, a carb-free carbonara with salmon bacon skin uh, as well as a lovely dessert of floating islands uh, and then we have the additional holiday special of our special log cake turned trifle um, and yeah so I hope you enjoyed uh, the video as much as we did um, making it um, have happy holidays enjoy time with your fur friends if you felt inspired to make any of these dishes or you have new adaptations or suggestions on how we could have ensured none of the dishes went wrong um, please comment please let us know we'd love to find out more over from zoom vet um, just a reminder that we will be open for the whole of the holiday seasons or if you need any help if you want to speak to a vet just call us uh, and our vets are just a ring away thank you to kohi pets our sponsor for this fun um, video um, if you would like to get any of the products that we had shown in the video, please head over to www.kohipets.com and you can grab them over there. So once again, uh, happy holidays. Mel is happy, just that her face does not reflect that. And I have a happy new year. <laughs>